Okay, this video is about insulators, and it's going to be about gloves, and these are voltage rated gloves. Now, voltage rated gloves come into two parts. You have the rubber liner, and again, it's not supposed to fit skin tight. You're supposed to be able to pull your hand out if you need to. We're not picking up dimes. And then you have the leather protector that goes over that, and that's exactly what it is. It's a leather protector. So, uh, how you test these every day is it doesn't take but a minute, and it's, it is uh, safety regulations to do so. You hold this by the top, flip it around, and fill it with air. And then you, you let it rub, not touch your face, but Go around your face. You have a lot of nerves in your face and you can feel an air leak. And that's what you're doing, looking for an air leak. Uh, then pull the fingers apart. Look at the fingers. Look and see if the rubber is okay or if it's starting to peel or chafe a little bit. It'll be winter time before long now. I'm turning it inside out and then I'm flopping it on my leg and that turns it completely inside out. And then, you do the same thing. And I don't feel any air. Look between the fingers. That's where you normally will see a hole. And there's no hole there. Look for the chafing on the rubber or any kind of peeling or anything. Because how big of a hole does it take for an electron to go through? <laughs> the answer is not much. Okay? Turn it inside out, flop it on your leg. Again. It turns in back out. Now, take your leather protector, look in between the webbing, see if it's the stitching's coming loose. If any of the stitching coming loose, it's bad, okay? Go get you a new protector. So once you check all that, and one final thing I do, if I don't see anything, I'll run my hand up in that leather protector and do this because if there's a little piece of wire or something in there, I'm gonna feel it now, and I might catch it before it goes through my glove. That's very important. If we're wearing these, what we're really saying is we're doing hot work. Whether we're testing electrical circuits or whatever it might be, if we're putting these gloves on, there's the, we have not proven a circuit dead, and we are anticipating that could be a live circuit. So we need good gloves. If these are 1,000 volt gloves, we're expecting 1,000 volts of protection with these gloves. Now, we're gonna talk about insulators and how good they may or may not be. So, we got us a truck, and it's gonna be a boom truck, just like OMU or Kennergy uses. Okay, and we got little outriggers on it. Keeps it from turning over, right? Those outriggers are on the ground. So we're grounded. Now, we got Lyman up there. He's a happy guy. And he's working on a highlight. And he's got big old pair of gloves on. Something like these, okay? Great big gloves. Now let's say he's working on a 13.8 kV line. Might be what light goes in front of your house. So the gloves would be much like these because these are 26,500 volt gloves. They're tested for that. How they do that, you send them off. They uh, put them in a vat of water with an electrode. They fill them with water, put them in a vat of water, take them down so far, and they see if they can pass a current through the rubber. So, these gloves are 26.5 kV. Now, the bucket truck, they have fiberglass booms they have fiberglass buckets. And once a year, they have to be tested to see if they can withstand the voltage they're built for. 
it's not uncommon to have a 100 kV bucket truck. So that means they're going to test this bucket truck to see from here to ground if it can withstand, if it, the insulation value can withstand 100,000 volts every year. So the question is, when you're driving down the street and that lineman has their glove on, they're up in that fiberglass boom, they touch that electric wire, does any current flow through the lineman? Maybe you thought about it, maybe you haven't. I spent most of my life thinking, well, there ain't no current going through that, through him, her. Well, Ohm's law holds up. I don't care what you do. Ohm's law holds up. It's just that important. If this, at 100,000 volts, passes 120 microamps, does that equal some kind of resistance? Sure it does, because R equals voltage divided by current. Excuse me, current. So we take 100,000 and divide it by 0 .00012, we can get an R, can't we? Same thing for the glove. If the glove is passes 30 microamps, at 26,500, same thing. Resistance equals E voltage divided by current, and we get a resistance for the glove. Now, the average person, you might remember this on that safety video, has between 1,000 and 1,500 ohms coming to a quiz midterm final near you. What does the average resistance does the average person have hand to hand? And that's 1,000 to 1,500 ohms. So let's just say 1,500 ohms, okay? So, if we add all this up, if we add resistance of the truck, resistance of the glove, resistance of the lineman, then we get an R total, right? We get an R total. Then if we take Ohm's law again, and now we're wondering when the lineman touches that line, does it, with their gloves on, with the high potted boom, does any current flow? Well, if we, then if we do the Ohm's law, I equals E divided by R, if E is, is uh, 13,800, 100 volts and R is RT, which is R resistance of the truck, resistance of the glove, resistance of the lineman. We can do that math. We're going to get some current. Okay? Now, on your safety video, if you remember that Shark Tongue Laboratory said that they have to build equipment, gloves, trucks, insulators that are good enough so that only a few hundred microamps flows through the human body. Wow, now, whew. so if that line has got gloves on and they're touching that line and there's current flowing, why don't they feel it? Well, a few hundred microamps is below the point of sensation. It takes one to three milliamps or one to three thousandths of an amp which is way more than just a few hundred microamps for us to feel it. But now, is that a working circuit? If you've got current passing, okay, if you've got voltage, a voltage source, that's a line, and then a path, well, the path here goes down to ground. Voltage always tries to go to ground. Very few times in your electrical life will you see where voltage doesn't try to go to ground. Then, if it's a working circuit, what can be compromised before you're in a world of hurt and that few hundred microamps goes up to amps or thousands of an amp, okay? That's why when things, <coughs> excuse me, when things go wrong with linemen, 
whenever they have a boom that's compromised or a glove that's compromised or they come close to ground and they, didn't th they thought they were isolated, uh, it's terrible. They're terrible, terrible, terrible events. Now, what's that mean to us as electricians if we're not linemen? If we put our gloves on, we're saying that we're getting ready to test the circuit. So we're testing a circuit. We have our meter leads in our hands. There's no perfect insulator. So when we touch 480, and you're gonna do a lot of testing on 480, that, that is the most predominant voltage out there for motors in the industry. Then, right now, you know, based on our, what we've talked about, there will be current flowing through your body, okay? You might not feel it, but then what if you don't check your glove that day? What if you have a hole in it? What if you got a little piece of wire and you didn't check it because it's always good, there's no reason to check it. I've checked it every day this year. Never had a bad one. What day does a glove go bad? You know, that's why we check them so we know the day they go bad. So then today though, it's got that little piece of wire there and when you reach up there, you slip and you run your fingers up on a bus bar because you didn't check your glove and you didn't hold to it. Good safety practices, uh, it might be your last day. You know, I don't mean to be morbid, but we can't compromise our safety with electrical, okay? It doesn't take much of a hold to electrocute us. They've got to be in good shape. We've got to check them every day. And now we know there's no perfect insulator. Coming to a quiz midterm final near you, there is no perfect insulator. It doesn't matter what you've got. If you reached up there to touch voltage, you might not feel it, but you've got current flow, okay? So, email me any questions. We're gonna have another video uh, on test live, test dead, test live, okay? So.